Hi, as we saw in previous modules, moisture content together with carbon-nitrogen ratio is one of the most important parameters to look at when treating biowaste. Each treatment technology requires the biowaste to be within a specific range of moisture content. But do you know how to measure moisture content in the first place? Or what happens if your biowaste is out of these ranges for that treatment technology? This is what we will learn in this module. After watching this module, you will know how to calculate moisture content using the oven drying method, how to calculate absolute moisture content of a mixture of two different bio wastes with known levels of moisture, how to calculate how much of two different materials with known moisture contents you need to mix to achieve a desired level of moisture, and how to use the hand squeeze test. Welcome to our lab. Cute, isn't it? If you're aiming at accuracy and precision, you will consider conducting your measurements indoors where external factors such as wind, rain and insects are minimized and there is no contamination through other materials. But a kitchen would also be fine for more rough estimates. Just make sure you clean it properly afterwards. Let's list now the materials required for the analysis. An oven which reaches approximately 105 degrees and which can run continuously for 24 hours a scale with an accuracy resolution of at least 0.01 grams to measure the samples before and after drying. Pen and paper. One large cutting board. A knife or a small shredder to chop the waste into small pieces. At least three small sampling containers per biowaste type. Mark each of them with a number or a code in a way you can identify them. Use a marker that stands high temperatures. At least three large bowls for mixing an immediate storing of the waste. If you have a desiccator, also take it. And recommended but not necessary, protective equipment, waterproof gloves, mask, and protective goggles. You don't want squirting waste juices get into your eyes. Now that we are all set, let's go get ourselves some waste. Ta-da! Here is the bio waste we will sample: five kilograms of food waste and 5 kilograms of sawdust. Food waste is very heterogeneous, whereas sawdust is very homogeneous. If you possess big amounts of waste, take a manageable sample of around 5 to 10 kilograms. If the bio waste is very heterogeneous, try to estimate the percentages of each bio waste type in the overall mix and sample accordingly. The sample needs to represent the heterogeneity of the material. Let's now prepare the samples of food waste. First, we recommend you to chop the waste to reduce the particle size. Once chopped, mix the waste well and take 4 or 5 small samples of around 100 grams each from different places. Once more, mix the small samples by chopping and stirring. The smaller the pieces, the better. From the mixed result, take 3 samples of around 25 grams and put each in a different container. Now the samples are ready to be taken to the oven. Note that you should not wait too long after chopping the material before you put it in the oven. Cutting increases the waste's surface area and thus makes it dry out faster. For homogeneous waste, sampling is much easier. The only issue to pay attention to is that the moisture content might not be the same in every part of the bio waste. Therefore, it is recommended to steer the material well before taking a sample. If you really want to take a representative sample, you would still take 4 to 5 samples of 100 grams each from different places and mix them. From this mixture, just as for heterogeneous waste, take 3 samples and place each into a different container. Place each container on a scale and note down the sample ID and its weight on your computer or piece of paper. We will refer to this as the total wet weight. Place your homogenized samples in the oven and let them dry at 105 degrees for 24 hours. Leaves you plenty of time to clean up your mess. Once your samples have spent 24 hours in the oven, take them out and let them cool down a bit. Ideally in a desiccator, so that they don't absorb ambient moisture. Then weigh the samples again. We will refer to this second weight as the total dry weight. Make sure to always note down 
wet and dry weight in pairs according to the unique sample ID. Now let's calculate the moisture content. Just as a reminder, moisture content is defined as the weight of water per unit of weight of a material, given in percentage. Here we see the values we obtained as weights. First, we need to deduct the weight of the container from the total wet weight to get the weight of the wet sample. Then, repeat the same calculation to get the weight of the dry sample. Then, the moisture content is calculated by this simple formula. Wet sample weight minus the dry sample weight divided by the wet sample weight times 100. And here we see the calculated moisture contents. Notice how the food waste has a much higher moisture content than the sawdust. The average value of the three samples taken from each bio-waste type is the moisture content value to consider for that particular type of waste. Taking three measurements or triplicates allows you to control for the validity of the method. Imagine our second food waste sample had a moisture value of 47.8% instead of 80.3%. That is a clear sign that something went wrong in the measurement and therefore we will not consider it in the average. Now assume you want to mix the two types of bio waste we measured here. What would be the final moisture content? You can calculate it using this formula. Let's now substitute the values we got for the food waste and sawdust in this formula. We get a moisture content of 48.5%. Let's assume now we want to compost this mixture. The moisture content of a material should range between 55 to 75% for composting. Our material is therefore too dry. So what can we do now? We could add water since the material is too dry. If the material was too wet, we could dry it, for example, in the open air. Alternatively, we could recalculate the amounts of materials that we should mix to attain the desired moisture content. Great! Now you know how to play around with moisture content. If you need a quick and dirty approximation of the moisture content of compost or a similar material, you can approximate it using the hand squeeze test. For this purpose, take a fistful of the material and squeeze it. Imagine you are wringing a sponge with one hand. But don't overdo it. The solid fraction of the sample should stay in your hand. After squeezing, release your grip, palm up, and observe the material on your hand. Check this table for an indication. With practice and confirming your estimates with a drying test, your hand becomes calibrated and thus more accurate. That's it. In this module we learned how to calculate moisture content using the oven drying method, how to calculate absolute moisture content of a mixture of two different bio wastes, how to calculate how much of two different materials with known moisture contents you need to mix to achieve a desired level of moisture, and how to use the hand squeeze test.